There you go. Oh, look at those fingers. Oh, Jack, you know you're getting to be a real pro. Oh, girl. you're too kind. I'm still so afraid I'm going to drop this little bundle of chalk. Oh, no, you're not going to drop it. I mean, he's just, he's just, he's so little. I'm so big, I, he scares me. <laughs> well, is that an attitude to have for a godfather? Well, no, I mean, I imagine a godfather would... What do you mean? Tom and I would very much like you to be Jamie's godfather. Good morning. Are you ready for some rides, Tom? Oh, I think I got some real wing wing CW books, magazines. What are, they... what are you doing here? Can I see the sweet little Stop. Thing? You stop. You don't come any closer. What? You stay away from my baby. Brooke, I, I, I am sorry. I mean, I am just so sorry if I have upset you. I mean, as the good Lord is my witness, and, and you got to believe me here, I would never, I would never do anything to, to harm your little baby boy. Jack, could you leave us alone for a few minutes? Brooke, I don't want to see you under any extra pressure. Please, I just want to speak to Opal. All right. I want to be up front about this. Uh, this Tom what? Tom told me what happened with you and Dixie the night that Jamie was born. Oh, well. He also right. told you then that there is no connection between you and this baby. That's right. And, and I, I want to make it very clear, Opal, that I will not allow you to interfere in my life or to make trouble for my child. But and Brooke, if you try to do it, you will regret it. Now, 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 Brooke, honey, I think that you're just getting yourself all twisted up into a knot for absolutely no reason. The only reason I came in here was just as part of my official duties. Your duties? Yeah, my job. It's wheeling around these books and magazines, tapes, what have you, for the patients, you know, offering them some kind of relief from their tedium and horrendous suffering. You work here? Yeah, I do, as of this morning. Well, I'm only a volunteer, of course, but I'm telling you, I am getting as much out of this as the patients are, you know, seeing all these folks with all their pain and their aches and everything. I mean, it's really uh, keeping my mind off of my troubles, I can tell you that right now. I'm just here to, you know, spread a little sunshine, that's all. And that's why I came in here, was to offer you books, magazines, what have you. That is the honest truth. But you wanted to see the baby. Well, I don't mind seeing a newborn infant, no, but it's not why I came in here, really. I mean, they are just about the best thing in the whole wide world, don't you agree? And that one, I mean, look at him, he is a, he's a real gemaroo, no doubt about that, but, but really, really. Brooke, I did not come in here to, um, in any way suggest that he's Tad's baby. Oh, no, good heavens. I mean, you have been through enough as it is, you know. You don't need anything like that. And besides which, I'm really too old to, to I mean, to be a grandmother, don't you think? Oh, so cute. But I would know, I know much more. I know better than to ever ever try to stir up things about about that time, Brooke, between you and Ted. And Dixie knows that as well, you know. Honest to Pete. Do you really mean that? I sure as heck do. Well, I'm sorry, Opal. I, I didn't mean to get carried away. I didn't mean to, to 
snap at you. Oh, honey, don't you worry about it for one little second. I appreciate your being upfront about everything. I really do. And now I'm just going to leave you alone with your little tag, all right? You take care of yourself and you take care of him. I am out of here now and you have a good day, okay? Well, what? Well, it looked to me like I might have to represent you in a murder case. <laughs> Jack, she came in here, she wasn't even wearing a surgical gown. I mean... And that's all there was to it? Yes, that's all there was to it. Just the lioness protecting her cub from the unsafe. Look, I have every right to be protective about this baby. This baby had a lot of trouble getting into this world. And you don't have to worry about it, all right? I smoothed it all out. And that's all there was to it? Yes, that's all. Okay, Brooke, whatever you say. I'm getting better, huh? <laughs> all right, you little linebacker, dream of all those yards run, will you? He's running already. <laughs> Listen, Brooke, uh, about that offer. Which I hope you don't refuse. Uh, I'd love to, but it seems to me I recall a rather good-natured cop had a bid in before me, huh? Oh, Jack, Trevor's a wonderful person. And we love him very much. But it's just all the things that you've done for Tom and me these last few days, we both just felt it should be you. Thank you, Anna. I'm honored. Well, good. You know, I also remember uh, I was supposed to uh, perform in another official capacity, too, you know. What was that? Well, I was supposed to be best man at your wedding. Well, I think the wedding's going to have to wait for a, a little while. Oh? Well, Tom and I both think, obviously, I should be recovered before. Yes. Well, lucky you. Your lawyer used to also be a Boy Scout. I've come prepared. What is that? This is that declaration of paternity that I was telling you and Tom about. Now, all you have to do is you and Tom have to sign this, and it declares him the official father and legal father of young Jamie. Well, Tom and I both know who Jamie's father is. I know that, dear, but this just protects everybody's rights. Yours, Jamie's, Tom's. Look, Brooke, I'm not suggesting this to you just as your lawyer. I'm suggesting it to you as your friend and, and as Jamie's potential godfather. You really think this is necessary? I really think this thing should be wrapped up, yeah. Here, All right, let me look at them. Sort of right on, honey. There's a pen. Brooke, is there, uh, is there something wrong? Is there some problem that I should know about? No. No, no, of course not. So you had a good first day, huh? Oh, yeah, just peachy. Well, except for one little thing. What's that? I had a bad misunderstanding with Brooke. It only lasted a minute, but, ooh, it was a nasty one. What happened? Well, you know, I was just tooling into her room with my cart of many delights, and she kind of... Flipped out. Stay away from my baby. She screamed like I was getting ready to snatch the little darling. Now, why do you suppose she would react like that? Nerves, maybe hormones. Maybe she figures me for a troublemaker. I don't know. But I made sure that it all got straightened out. I was sure that she understood that we are making no claims on her baby, that we've dropped all notion of his, him being Tad's. Except I haven't dropped it. Oh, excuse me. Um, I I'm just on the way to, to see his mom. Do you mind if I take a peek? Sure. Thanks. He's a darling. Oh. Yes, he is. Oh, he's absolutely precious. What a darling little boy. 
I have to be going. Oh. Yeah, you, you go ahead. Okay, thanks. Sure. What the Sam Hill do you think you are doing? I'm just looking. That is not Tad's baby. I am absolutely sure about it, and you better get absolutely sure, too, and double quick. I can't. Dixie. I can't help it. He looks like him. No, he doesn't. Yes, he does. Dixie, all newborns look like Winston Churchill, and that little kid is no exception. He has his eyes, his, his nose, the shape of his head. No, honey, no. It's just because you want it to be, but there is no real resemblance. Yes, there is. No, you're just seeing what you want to see, and it's not a good idea for you to keep on with this like this. You know, you're just setting yourself up for a heartbreak, and you're not making it any easier on Brooke, either. Now, that is not Tad's baby. You know, he'd be ashamed of you carrying on like this. You're right. Sorry, I'm sorry. You're right. I'm carrying on. I, uh, I'm just... I'm just seeing what I want to see. That's right. That's right. Now, let's vamoose out of here, okay? You should have seen Jamie just now, Tom. He was so cute. Yeah. I'm absolutely sure now he has your ears. Oh, no. No doubt about it. Really, I think he's going to be as strong and handsome as, as his daddy. Yeah, he's going to be just as smart as his mom. I'm not sure I'm going to let him play football. I mean, well, you know, he's such a handsome young man. We'll talk about that. Yeah, I'd say you have a few years to decide about yes. that, huh? Okay, this takes care of it. All finished. Okay, thanks, Jack. You bet. See you guys later. Okay. All right, take care. Brooke English? I'm Livia Fry. I I'm sorry to disturb you, but it's really urgent. It's about Haley Vaughn. I need your help. So, look, if her own family won't testify or her case evaporates, any chance she has goes up in smoke. Really? Really. Yeah, it seems very likely to me. Well, it may seem cold-hearted, but I think Trevor's doing everything he can do to get Haley to wake up. Yeah, but to do it now when it practically guarantees that Haley would go to jail? Well, we don't know that, but still, that's the way it's got to be, yeah? But that's outrageous. I mean, she can't go to jail. And if Adam has his way, he won't let the prosecutor stop until the judge puts her there. And I'm afraid you're right on that one. Well, I'm not going to let that happen. He's not going to get away with it. Would, would my testimony help on her behalf? It would be wonderful. I'll arrange for an affidavit. Now, listen, I, I don't know Haley that well, but I'd be happy to say something in her behalf if it would help. It'd be great. Thank you. 